Hey this is Sayyam Botani and you're listening to Chai Time Data Science a podcast for data science enthusiasts where i interview practitioners researchers and calculators about their journey experience and talk all things about data science Hello and welcome to Quarantine Chai with Kaggle Competition winners, CTDS Road Show. In this episode, I interview two Kagglers from a team who just secured second position in the Pandas competition. The competition stands for Prostate Cancer Grade Assessment Panda Challenge. Uh, their team, Save the Prostate, ranked second in the private leaderboard. And I interview Dr. Habib, Habib Bukhari. and Igor Zubarev in this episode we talk about their journey into machine learning and kaggle habib comes from a background of medicine igor comes from a background of trading and we connect the dots of how both of them got interested in ml and in kaggle how did they get addicted to the platform they've teamed up before we talked about their approach to competitions their teaming up approach and we also discuss their solution overview In this interview we daily go over the timeline of how a winning solution how winners solutions come together so without further ado here's my conversation with Habib Bukhari Dr HP on Kaggle and Igor Zubarev Cat Eek here's the conversation please enjoy the show Hi everyone I am on the call with two amazing kagglers Habib Bukhari and Igor Zubarev thank you so much to both for joining me on the podcast thank you for inviting it's a yeah, honor thanks. to your thanks podcast. for having us C- can you please introduce yourselves with your voices for the audience that's uh, not watching the video uh so my name is Habib Bukhari uh yes i am kegler <laughs> by night i do I work at scientific computing on uh, at daytime. And I go uh, Yeah, yeah. My my name is Igor Zubarev and yeah, I I'm just pretty much the same. I'm just keggling. And uh <laughs> and and for now I'm doing the pretty much uh, a lot of keggling. Interesting. <laughs> we'll we'll talk more about that, but I want to start by asking you how did you find your interest in machine learning? Have you by new you started with a uh, a completely different world from coding itself you were interested in the biology side of things when did you discover machine learning uh it actually was a very long journey uh so i remember so i was working in the lab so really wet lab with pipettes and you know white coats and all this stuff <laughs> and uh at the time when i it i i did my phd in switzerland so it was uh, maybe 5 or 6 years ago Okay. and i ha- i had a roommate and you know we were just like playing around with different stuff and one day we watched we decided to watch this ted talk and i don't i don't remember by whom it was but um the guy basically said like knowing coding it's like knowing how to read and write in 11th century you know and this was yeah. like okay you know what we have to learn coding so in the beginning we start learning coding of you know python but we wanted to do trading and there is this website called quantopian.com i don't know if you guys heard um so we were trying to write a lot of codes for like doing trading and so on and eventually somebody over some time people start introducing machine learning to the quantopian and i realized okay you know what i like i don't know anything about machine learning so i start like learning or doing research so I took quickly Andrew and G cars uh, on Coursera I guess everybody took it but <laughs> after that I found a uh, I heard something about Jeremy Howard like I watched some YouTube video and I was I was like amazed you know 
he, his approach of teaching was like, you know, first practice, then like theory. And I was like, this is exactly what I need. So basically going through fast AI course and mostly Kaggle, I found my way to machine learning. And I completely forgot about trading, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> How did you go about learning Python uh, or programming in general? Was in, in hindsight, was that also <laughs> top-down approach that you followed with the materials? I think after Jeremy Howard, yes, I follow a top-down approach. It was first mostly a problem-oriented approach. So, you know, like, um, I, I, I still, I can say, I, to this date, I, I don't think I know basics. Well, maybe I know basics, but I'm like intermediate Python. Mostly I just hack around, you know, hmm. just whatever works, whatever works. You hack Python together and score gold medals on Kaggle competition. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> this, is pretty much, this is pretty much it is. I, got, I know you come from the world that uh, Habib was aspiring for, the world of trading. How, was, uh, were you always aware of machine learning? Were, were you working on these algorithms in your previous life? Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, actually, no. Um, mo- most of my most of my time in trading was like uh, not related with the, with any machine learning or stuff. Uh, it was more more classical things uh, and some 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 pretty specialized uh, strategies. But uh, uh, so it, at at one time, I just. Uh, start trying to to create some algorithms, and I realized that I uh, I didn't know any any programming language, and I I just uh, we had we had a, a programmer in our team. He was he was like uh, he was writing all the stuff, all the technical stuff like like platform, uh, some uh, some helper functions and uh, everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and I just start working with some uh, uh, GUI. I I started creating trading algor- algor- algorithms from from blocks, and I got introduced a little with the with JavaScript. Okay. So our 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 trading platform was using it uh, at some uh, like you can write some uh, uh, some indicators. Uh, and add them to to the platform with JavaScript. Uh, but I had no idea how to code. I just uh, copy pasted some some functions and get got them into blocks, and that worked. And okay, uh, then I. <laughs> <laughs> That's then what I real thought, coders also do, but never admit. <laughs> <laughs> then then I just uh, stumbled upon uh, some machine learning, some classical machine learning like linear regression and. I started to, it was just like in my spare time, I started to try, try these approaches to, to apply them to, to, my, to my work. And uh, I got some results uh, here and there, but I actually uh, haven't, haven't really used them on scale. So it was uh, at, 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 uh, like, so, some of the algorithms required like a lot of infrastructure. Uh, others are simply were little worse than, than myself or my colleagues. So they worked, but not so good. Uh, and and then I, I stumbled upon that course on edx.com, which was called like uh, artificial intelligence and, and some stuff. And I, I, I quickly, quickly looked through and I uh, decided that, okay, that's interesting. I, 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 I'm deeply interested in this and I want to learn about it. And I'll, I'll get through this course like I did in trading. Like I, I just, I, I didn't know any Python, but I just assemble, assemble the code from different parts. And I don't need to, to, to learn to code to do this course. And I was badly wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I then I stopped uh, like I I I, um, I get almost a, a week into the course and I realized that I had to learn to code so I started learning Python I like I read just some some blog posts some books and uh, I participated in some uh, online contests 
and it was actually one one site called code eval uh in in a couple of years i became pretty high ranked here there and then the does, site does got stay, closed. sorry does the website still exist code eval no 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 that, that's the thing it, it got closed okay. I, I choose it uh, over top coder because I simply like the interface better. I decided to stick with it and then <laughs> it's gone now. <laughs> so yeah, and then I just uh, gradually, I dropped out from trading because uh, this thing really, really became totally boring for me. Uh, and I, yeah, I got I got introduced to deep learning via Andrew Ng course on Coursera. So I finished it like in with, with some breaks in several months. It was pretty hard. And then I just realized that I knew some theory. I learned some coding, but uh, I have no idea how to apply this knowledge to to anything in the real world. And I just tried to, to, to arrange some projects. I uh, tried to read some scientific papers and they didn't work out. And then finally I, I stumbled upon Kaggle. And first I started Kaggling like uh, not, not so actively. I like, it, 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 uh, it was like half a year between my first competition and my second competition. Uh, so that, that, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, something I've always wanted to ask someone from a trading background. I just have two monitors. I love showing them off. Is it true how they show in the movies that a trader has like five to seven screens around them? Is is that how you would work back in the day? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Guys had like three, four, six monitors. Wow. It was norm, normal. <laughs> and some mechanical keyboards. Like back in the days, it was guys traded some like... Guys, guys actually traded against the the first H HFT algorithms with, with okay. their bare hands and using mechanical keyboards. They like cra crazily fast typing on the keyboard. It, it you was, could hear them was, from across the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interesting. But the, those days are long gone now. Machine learning has taken over. Um, what was, uh, for both of you, what was the first Kaggle competition experience like and how did you improve after that? Um, for me, it was, I think my first Kaggle competition was Mercedes-Benz competition. Uh, it was a tabular competition, only 4,000 rows, I remember. And, uh, you know, I... My Python was not so good, but I somehow, you know, managed to code pipeline. Uh, I think I was introduced to grid search, you know, using scikit-learn. So I was doing a bunch of grid searches. You know, I, I wrote a bunch of like, I mean, right now I looked yesterday on my code. I still have it. It just, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> but I remember the feeling after like one or two weeks, I came out of this competition and I was like, wow, my knowledge in, in like machine learning greatly increased just by reading forum and like doing something actually. Uh, so the competition was really interesting. I, I really worked really hard, really hard, but at the end it was a shake up. <laughs> I think the, <laughs> the winner of the competition was somebody who just did one or two submission like a few months ago. And I didn't know what is ShakeUp at this point. So this was my first in, like introduction to Kegel. And after, <laughs> after the competition was over, I, I, you know, I, I really felt that I can do something, something useful. I really felt that, okay, you know what? I need to continue doing Kegel. It seems like it can increase my knowledge. And after this, I started doing a lot of tabular competitions um, and just, uh, reading a lot of stuff. I think what I found useful is discussions, discussions <laughs> and notebooks. It's, it's just all the information which you need to, to get to gold medal, it's found there. There is like, you just have to combine them. You have, and just never give up. This is, this was my first, like, um, yeah, this is my first competition experience and how 
I move on afterwards. So I didn't give up after Sheka, basically. Okay, but but you also need the capabilities like Habib or Igor to be able to convert that knowledge in the forums into a gold medal. So that's that's also a challenge for many people. Um, yeah, yeah. This is like you know. I think I think the the one thing you have to know. You don't have to be lazy. And if something is not working, you know, just try. Just try hundred times. It eventually will work. Yeah, I think this is the this is the number one skill. Like you had to have patience, you know. Definitely, uh, right. we'll we'll swing back to that topic because it's really connected to fast A as well. I go. Uh, you said you eased into Kaggle. How was your experience on the initial competitions like, and how did you improve from those? No, it actually it was very frustrating. Uh, my first competition was uh, home credit. It was also tabular data. <laughs> And I, uh, I started like in my own way for some reason. I didn't pay too much attention to discussion forum. I didn't look into the notebooks at all. I just started to assemble my pipeline from the ground up. Uh, and I, uh, I really, uh, I really started to to working with TensorFlow back in the day. And so I decided to, to build my pipeline on TensorFlow. Uh, I used both neural networks and uh, I don't know if it's still there, but uh, back in the day, TensorFlow had also boosted tree classifier. So I started to, right. yeah, I, I tried using it and I, I engineered some features and I thought that I, I read I read some some papers about that SMOT technique, uh, uh, synthetic minority oversampling, and I decided uh, uh, that uh, th this 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 that will will help me to get high on the leaderboard, and I I really uh, spent a lot of time coding some stuff and building some pipeline uh, with with synthetic data, and it and uh, the result was totally. Not, not what I expected, <laughs> and I ended up somewhere in the second half of the leaderboard. So yeah, it was. But I, I learned a lot. I, I I greatly improved my coding skills, and I I learned pandas like pretty good. So yeah, it was it was a great experience. I'm sure. Uh... I think most of the calculus go through a shakeup or, or a bad experience in their first competition. How, how, how did you improve after that? Uh, did you have any conscious effort or were you like just enjoying competing and uh, as you competed, you learned? Uh, yeah, my, 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 uh, my objective was, uh, was learning from the, from the day one. So I enjoyed, I, I didn't thought about uh, even, even taking some, some bronze medal. I, I didn't thought of, of this at all. Hmm. Uh, actually, for for like for maybe two or three of my first competitions, I I thought that getting bronze medal is some like like really good achievement, and I I never thought that 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 I'll be able to do this in like in couple of years. Uh, so yeah, I, I was also you. wrong about it. <laughs> <laughs> you were very wrong about it. Um, I also thought getting bronze medal will be like, like winning a Nobel prize. Yeah, it was so hard. It was really hard. And I, but coming back to home credit, I mean, so I won silver, but afterwards I realized that there is such thing called ensemble. Where you, where you, you don't have to submit your one single best model. You know, you can actually submit like fifty of those combined. <laughs> so I did some ensembling afterwards, and I realized I could have done pretty good. <laughs> so, <laughs> my, my my first gold medal in discussions uh, was where I had shared my goal to be, uh, to achieve two bronze medals in two years and that was two years ago. So <laughs> that was my long-term goal as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think what's interesting is that you start really 
from zero and like getting bronze medal was such a such a difficult task i like i i it was i really worked really hard i think everybody does in the beginning but then you know once you got bronze medal then you get getting greedy, bronze, a little yeah getting bronze medal now i don't think it's it's any challenge at all like for you class. for you <laughs> yeah but then was the challenge to get silver medal which i was like you know what <laughs> there's this no way i will ever able to get silver medal and then you get silver medal and you're like okay <laughs> maybe 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 we can get maybe we can try gold medal and and this is how it goes i know igor is not on twitter maybe maybe you are i couldn't find your profile but the tweet on habib's profile pin that the top is i'm just two medals two gold medals away from a grand master so that really speaks to your progress in just a few years yeah i mean i i mean once i got i got my first gold medal i was thinking it just you know it's just a lot it just you know like one time event in the universe <laughs> but then actually yeah after this i started getting like i mean you really have to work hard so yeah it's it gets easier once you know like all these small tricks you know every competition i learned some tricks you know as i said home credit i don't know what it was the ensemble i have no idea there is all these small tricks which actually you learn over your journey by reading discussion and reading the solutions which um can you know it's small baggage which can help you to get the medals <clears throat> i i think the efforts mean the same but it also becomes a little more fun as as you keep competing it feels less yeah. of like work i think yeah <laughs> So uh, please, please talk us through how do both of you approach competitions today? Uh, what's your approach? I know uh, maybe I might be wrong. You tend to team up towards the later end. Uh, how do you? What does your pipeline look like in general? Um, so just generally, um, what I usually do is like entering the competition. First thing I go and, I mean, yeah, you just just need to understand what's the data. I I look at the data. and then immediately i go to the forums you know there's always a topic like the best topic which i like to to read a lot is like best single model and usually people not only report their scores but you know they start writing like what they use and so on so this is really helpful to get the idea for example what model works and what is the cv and lb correlate so cv is cross validation score and which is your local score and I'll be the leaderboard score. So what is the, you know, difference between them? Second thing I always do uh reading. Uh there's a lot of paper published on the topic, so I, for example, for many of this competition there is some special networks designed. For example, for blindness competition there were a bunch of research up to blindness 2009 19 there was a bunch of research people were using convolutional network. So you start reading you start like building a small um really good you know pipeline and then you from there i just systematically start like playing around depending on the data you know read a lot of forums try something here um if i see some improvement i just make a note and then move to another experiment and um eventually when i'm like really high usually i don't know high silver um I I mean at some point I try to look for teammates similar level actually it doesn't matter what kind of title he has um or she has uh it just I basically judge by people who are active on the forums or you know they have good interesting models and I just ask them hey you guys are interested in teaming up and then you know we start well, this is how I team up all the time so first I work alone and then if there is something interesting i just team up um i i yeah. go i would love to know your pipeline as well what does it look like generally for uh, any competition uh yeah it's it's pretty much uh, pretty much the same i actually start looking at uh, for for some baselines i i i look i look for the leaderboard i <laughs> i i look for the notebooks uh i i see what approach people use in those notebooks 
I also read the read forum. It's it's uh, one of the most important things is to is to read forum. So yeah, then I then I just uh, just uh, just start experimenting with some pipeline. I usually take my 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 work from from previous competition and slightly alter it and then use it uh, to build a new pipeline. And then, then it's pretty much the same. This is how we got, how how we how we know each other with Habib. It's uh, we we just team up in Bengali competition, like this. Okay. Um, and uh, if if you could talk about your recent gold medals, I know both of you have teamed up and won two ones. Uh, I'd like to talk about the pandas uh, competition for the audience. I just spell out the name. The complete name is. Prostate Cancer Grade Assessment Panda Challenge, and their team was uh, titled "Save the Prostate." If if you'd like to check out the leaderboards, it's right at the top. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> so, could could you share a bit more about the challenge and why did you get interested in this? Uh, why did you decide to spend time on it? Um. Yeah. So, Panda Challenge. So it's a First of all, I got interested. Okay, few re few things. First of all, the name was attractive, panda. I was thinking <laughs> in the beginning it's some competition for animal rescue or something, but actually it's prostate cancer diagnosis, which is a huge problem. So this was the first motivation. Second, the data itself was really challenging. So the images, the original resolution of these images were like you know, 30,000 by 40,000, I believe, some of them. It was like really huge biopsy images. Um, um, and um, uh, yeah, so, you know, you cannot, if you have such a huge images, and also they were not rectangular, so they had all these different weird shapes. So, you know, usually, if you know, you have to pay like square images to a CNN, so it was like really challenge so the, what attracted me that the images were really large the problem was interesting like important for man health and like technical point of view how would you train neural network if the image is so large um so, so what, what what were these images exactly and how are these different oh, from regular ones okay so the 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 images it's biopsy scan so as i understand they go they do biopsy they extract the tissue and then what they do, and you know, when you do biopsy, you cannot like make precise cuts because it's really it's extremely hard to have precise cuts. Right. And then what they do, they take the biopsy and they put on the on the slide, okay? So you can imagine there is a different shape. Some, some are really long, other are like, you know, circle shape, like there's all kinds of shapes you will see, you know? Some, sometimes the tissue was broken, you know, because you know, like when you put, and then what they will do, they will scan it. And during the competition, they gave us three resolution. One was like really small resolution. Uh, I, I think it's 1000 by something, it was still big. And then there was a medium resolution and then there was a really high resolution where you actually can see all the details of the cells inside this tissue. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, so it's basically real patient sample Extracted, yeah, extracted from patients and scanned. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, so you can you can clearly see this is like really challenging. You have like all these different weird shapes. There is a different tissue. Sometimes tissue is broken. You know. Uh, sometimes you actually have yeah. It's it's there is there was a lot of noise noise coming there. So it was really challenging to work with this kind of data. <clears throat> for for the audience. Uh, can you help us appreciate it a little more? Because it, it sounds like at least a very higher level that scene and should be able to work with this. This isn't a very tough problem. Okay. Um, okay. So why? Okay. So, you know, okay. So when you feed into the CNN, you should usually people, I mean, there are obviously different networks, but standard way is that you usually feed like 224 by 224, 64 by 64. It's just the way, it's the most efficient way um, to, you know, to feed network to convolution layers, you know, uh, to 
oh, sorry, feed images to convolution layer. You know, there's, um, the, this is how the CNN designs. So here, you cannot do this because, you know, we had 200 in one dimension and 1,000 in one dimension. So the only way you could feed it is like, either you divide in, you know, in equal size chunks, you know, either you do five, 196, you know, somehow cover the whole tissue, or you just shrink this 1,000 uh, by 200 image to something like 224 by 224, but then you completely kind of mess up all the features. But so, you get a data set gold medal <laughs> for doing yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, this is, this, is, this is what's not the way to do it. So I guess one, we will talk a little bit later about solution. We'll, I will cover, we will talk about like how we try to like overcome these issues. Um, so this was at least my reasons why I entered this competition. So maybe Igor has different reasons um, why he wanted to do this competition. I don't know. Uh, yes, uh, basically, I, I, uh, I am very interested. I'm very passionate about uh, biology and medicine. Uh, I mean, AI applied to biology and medicine. And I try to participate in like, in every single uh, competition on these topics. So th th that's how I got, uh, uh, how I got interested in this competition. And then yes, it's pretty challenging. It's, it's very high resolution images and it's noisy data. So uh, it's, uh, th this problem seem seems, uh, seem to be as close to, to real life application as possible. So you, you gather you gather data somewhere in one place and this data is noisy. You don't know which part of this is noisy, which part of, the, of it is okay. And then you had to make some predictions using this model on some totally different data from totally different distribution and it should perform well enough. So this was interesting. Okay. Um, so. I after you had your interest after the competition got you, I, how did you approach? I, I know uh, I, I might be wrong again, but I think you teamed up again towards the later end. How, how did you both approach the competition individually? Um, so uh, basically, yeah, I, what I, I came to forum when the competition started and there's this guy, I actually don't know how to pronounce his name. It's, Iofos or Lafos, uh, he's like, he became Colonel Grandmaster. So he published several, he had several discussion and he had a really good baseline kernel. So this was a good starting point. Um, so after, yeah, after going through his kernel, I decided, okay, you know what? It's time to do some reading on this matter since the, I mean, there has to be some papers and there were a bunch of papers actually, but the problem with all these papers where they were using like crazy number of GPUs, you know, like two, two GPUs, 16 GPUs, like my computer, or like I will have no money to do this competition, you know? So, um, so I mean, it kind of, so I was like, okay, you know what? We have to come up with some different ways to do this because we cannot afford this kind of resources to waste, you know, for this, uh, this competition. So. Uh, I mean, so first uh, I read few papers. First I read on terms of how people using CNN, there were some smart tricks, you know, they were um, trying to, you know, resize, use only special areas, training like resizing all the image, training on like this image, figuring out, figuring out the important areas and like trying to work on these only areas. So this was one thing. Second, I was starting reading a lot on, um, on staining. So apparently, you know, when you extract the tissue, you cannot just put in microscope. You have to stain it with different, um, uh, different dyes. Dyes, right? So in order to make, you know, you you know where what you are looking for. There's cells, there's nucleus, and so on. So there are different staining methods which we also encounter is in these data sets. So we had um, uh, two institutes, um, Rodbound and Karolinska, and they had like, so they had like, I, I think it was different staining, but if you, comp if you look at these two images, two biopsies from these two, two institutes, you can clearly see the difference in, in the colors. 
So I spend like a lot of time, like just doing basic reading, trying to understand what's up, what's the problem and what could be the issues. Um, forums was helpful. There was a lot of discussions on different uh, architectures, designs uh, to like how we can, you know, feed the images to convolution neural networks, uh, feed in a way that we don't destroy the feature and, the, and we cover most of the tissue, you know, because we don't, maybe, you know, the, the things which are, the features which you are looking, maybe it's at the end of the tissue, you know, like small areas are on the edge, you know. So we like, so basically, yeah, I spent a lot of time doing reading and just playing around with okay. architectures, yeah. And then eventually, eventually I saw Igor. And so, you know, we teamed up with him in Bengali, but I thought, well, you know, time to like, to move, like let's enter the new competition. Maybe I will team up with the new people, but he was up there high in the ranking. So I was like, I knew, for example, how, um, I knew how he worked, you know, uh, I know how his work ethic. So I just sent him message and we just team up again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this was before merger, how we, how I did stuff. So I, yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's fascinating. That's, that's what the podcast, uh, I, I try to bring out why this is, uh, you look at a leaderboard, someone is, is at the second position, but there's this complete story behind it. Uh, Igor would, would love to know how you were working, uh, your, your story of uh, working before the merger. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I joined the competition like uh, maybe a month from the start. And I also just, use, as usual, they just uh, look, look for the forum looked through the kernels, uh, found the, the same stuff as Habib did. Uh, and I started experimenting. And for some reason, I, I wasn't able to, to get the results, uh, the, the same results uh, from the same methods. Uh, it turned out that like if, if I was using the lowest resolution, it was okay. Uh, the result was pretty pretty consistent, but it was it was uh, definitely not enough to to win anything. Interesting. Uh, but 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 with the medium resolution, it was a totally different story because, uh, like number of tiles you you need to extract from the uh, whole slide increased like by by an order of magnitude, so. It, it it was it was okay to use like ten tiles for for lowest resolution, but for for medium resolution you have you have to use like several dozens. So uh, and it turned out that uh, conventional approaches didn't work for me. I like if I if I set to batch size like. Uh, to be too too small, mm, my model wasn't learning anything. Uh, it was it was simply not converging, uh, and I like I spent quite a lot of time figuring this out, and then I decided to switch to group normalization. Uh, but then I realized that not using image net per trained weights is a bad idea. So if I just convert model, uh, simply replace all batch norm layers with group norm layers, uh, this this will destroy the pre-trained weights and model will will not perform well. Then I the, uh, I found this uh, GitHub repository with uh, with pre-trained weights for group normalization models, and that's how I. That's how I got a model with, with, with batch size only one. And I was able to use uh, like 50 tiles with it. And that's how I got result like yeah, in, 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 in pretty high silver by, by that time. And uh, that, that's, that's that exactly when we, we teamed up with Habib, who was like uh, slightly higher than, than me. Uh, so we teamed up and started working together from from that point on. 
Okay. Uh, I, I, I'll talk about, I'll ask about your uh, solution in a bit, but what happens, uh, many people, uh, they don't have such a rich teaming up experience. What happens after you team up? I know there were more members. How do you distribute ideas? How do you keep a track of every crazy thing that's going on in these uh, one or two months? Um, so, yeah, so we had our team at the end had five people. So usually when we team up, uh, there is always a period where everybody talks about, you know, their experience, what they did, what they didn't work. And like, at the same time, people are, you know, talking, everybody tries this at the, on their local, you know, local station. Maybe it, it, it can, you know, we just try. So most of the discussions, so in the beginning, it was, it, we spent like one or two weeks, you know, just sharing ideas, you know, like mm. talking, doing small experiments and so on. Um, what helped us a lot that each member of our team has completely different models. They were using different tricks, different ways to overcome problem, they were, to overcome problems. The so first was that we want to spend less resources, you know, and to ma- and also to use it to maximum potential. So for example, Igor had a trick uh, to to do this group normalization where he could train at bite size one and get really high score. For example, um, other, uh, like I actually use resident 34 only because why not? Hmm. Uh, other team members like uh, he, um, he, he 29, his name, or oh, he's a Kegel. He was using TPU, so we had a person who was working with TensorFlow, and Rugio was also Rugio was also had also really nice resources. So we all were using like medium resolution, but Rugio found a way to use actually high resolution, also really smartly. So we don't spend too much resources. So you know, by the time we came to this to the merger, we already everybody already had a really nice you know setup going on and had like few tricks so uh discussing this helped actually a lot but um one thing what was clear that you know we have to everybody has to pursue different ideas you know um we can talk about this later how we like um do like you know these ideas come mostly based on the data challenges so Mm -hmm. um one was dealing with the noise um Second was, um, how can we make our model robust? You know, third was, um, how we can use all the information available to us. By information, I mean um, different resolutions. So we have low, medium, and high. So we kind of, everybody was working around these areas. Um, Yeah, I don't know if Igor wants to add something. Uh, yeah, so uh, the main challenges of the competition were explicitly stated by the organizers. It was like high resolution and uh, noisy labels. Uh, everyone, uh, every one of us, like, uh, tried to try to address these issues in, in his own way. And we, we, we did a lot of research on, on staining on, uh, like we, we even, we even uh, tried to, uh, to, mig- to mitigate those differences in staining, even using uh, guns, but th- this, uh, this didn't work out. Then I, I did pretty, pretty, pretty much uh, a lot of work uh, to, to combat noisy labels. I read a lot of papers. I tried a lot of stuff. I, I tried to find uh, like incorrectly labeled examples. I tried to remove them from the data set, but it, it, it also didn't work out. We realized that we simply cannot trust nor CV nor LB score. And we, we, uh, we decided that we need uh, to build a robust approach, to, uh, like the, as diverse as possible. Uh, uh, we we aimed at 
at having very small LBCV gap and very consistent performance across different faults and di different splits. So like that, that, that's what we did in the end. Okay. Um, I, I, I think it might not be the case with you. It, it is the case with me. Many beginners, they, they hit a wall after which they run out of ideas. Uh, they don't know what to do. They search the forums, they looked at the kernels. Do, do you do both of you hit such points and uh, how, how do you progress after that where your score isn't improving you've tried a lot of things how do you go from there oh yeah this happens a lot actually <laughs> sometimes you run out of ideas. that's reassuring yeah. uh, yes uh, it's it's actually completely normal um for this competition there were time where like actually lb was not moving at all you know there were only like same it's, it, basically for a few weeks it kind of stayed the same you know there was no improvement at all. Um, I think we, yeah, even like we were discussing among, or we were like, yeah, I mean, we kind of tested a lot of stuff and at some point we like, yeah, we didn't have so much stuff to test. But I think the one thing which helps to generate ideas is read a lot of new papers, you know, new tricks. There is always, um, we always like, for example, in our case, when, you know, we tried pretty much everything we tried, we start like eager did a lot of experiments, for example, improving, um, you know, that, so just to, just to give you the idea that we have, so, you know, you have image, which is really large and what we do, we divide into the tiles. So, if, so in medium resolution, you need like maybe 70 tiles to cover whole thing. And each tile, each tile individually fed into the convolutional networks. And what we do at the end, so let's say if we have 49 tiles per biopsy, if we, in my case, we fed to Resonant 34, we then collect 49 by feature maps, okay, for each biopsy. And then, for example, we did, Igor did a lot of experiments on figuring out what is the best way to pull these features, you know, so he came up with the, um, um, we'd see the squeeze and excite layer, you know, so we put squeeze and excite layer. Then uh, we also figure out that, you know what, the best way actually to be actually, you know, after squeezing and excite, excite layers, you add linears and ReLU and, and batch norm. So we decide it will be best to remove the batch norm. We did the experiment. So, you know, if we run out of ideas, we always try to like focus on something which, which we have and we can somehow, you know, play around. Um, but yeah, um, there were some times, yeah, we, we literally had nothing. The score was like crazily, yeah, it was just sta stationary. You, you get high local TV, but when you submit on 2LB, you get exactly the same score. It was 0.89 for like, I remember, 0.89 or 0.90 for like two weeks, you know, straight. No matter what you do, it's, it's just there. <laughs> Igor, uh, Habib mentioned so many terms. Ma many of us don't even know what bash norm is, what squeeze and excite layers are. How, how do you uh, come up with the intuition of uh, should you add this layer? Is is it intuition driven or is it are you just trying stuff? Do are you just trying to add more layers to your network and seeing if that works? Or is is it a mix of both? Yeah, it, it it's most certainly a mix of both because. When you like you 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 just experimenting with with the classification head, for example, you just try like uh, a single output layer, and maybe you try two layers, maybe three. Just what what works best. You you play around with with the number of uh, features, and uh, squeeze and excite layer. I just uh, I just wanted to to apply some kind of attention to to this uh, resized feature feature tensor and then I just uh, experimented with a couple of uh, layers and I found that squeeze and excite works pretty well so that that's that's pretty much it it's just just iterative experimenting and mm. that's all okay um, so uh, now now I'd finally love to know more about your uh, solution maybe an overview since uh, the podcast format might not be best for all of the details but um, any overviews that you'd like to share that made it to the final solution? Okay, so um, okay, so we had four different approaches. So my approach was um, 
So I've worked through whole comp competition with Resonant 34 because I wanted to have mercy on my GPUs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I basically tweaked Resonant 34 to like maximum performance. Uh, so I did tricks, what Igor mentioned, uh, what we discussed with Igor. So one more trick which we did is actually we use, so the scoring was quadratic kappa, mm -hmm. uh, the metric. So which means that we can actually use regression at the end. So what I did when I trained neural network, for example, I used regression and the classification hats. So during the training, I noticed, for example, this actually helps um, converge the network. But I, so I was training using this, using this two hat, calculating two losses, just combining uh, C loss plus uh, DC. But, um, at the end, I was only taking predictions from the, you know, from regression hat. So, um, so this is, I mean, one thing which I did, for example, me and Igor in our team, we decided that we want our model, we want to remove all kind of noise. So there were some tiles where they had a pen marks, you know, there were some mm -hmm. tiles where there was no mask present. So we removed all this noise. So at least on our part, we were working with very clean data, at least in our hand, okay? Um, so this was, so I used the tile approach. So I can briefly talk also about our teammates since they are not here. Uh, one was uh, he, he used a TensorFlow, so, which was actually also really advantageous because he could utilize all our, all our TPUs hours, you know, so it was <laughs> which 120, I guess, or 150. Uh, so what he was doing, he, instead of um, using tiles, what he was doing, he was making from tiles one big image and he's training, he was training like this. So he was feeding just images, classical training. So he had completely different set of features which convolutional network learns. What Smartin, what he did is he was actually using, since we had two data centers, right? So we had Karolinska and Redbound. So he was using two different losses to calculate so to update parameters, okay? So he was using Huber loss and uh, it was BSC, uh, right? MSC. MS, MSC and Huber loss, right? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so we had this and then the, the really cool solution we had from our third teammate, Rugio. So what he did, he is like, you know what? I want to use also high resolution. So what he was, he was training. He had more um, GPUs. <laughs> well, he actually, he had similar GPUs, but he did something smart. So he took the, so he was training again on the medium level, mm -hmm. but he had attention ahead at the end. And basically attention head will tell, you know, the way how attention works, it will tell which tile is important, right? So if you feed 50 tiles, we maybe get like, According to CNN, maybe there is five or six tiles are important. Mm -hmm. So what he was doing, he was taking the top four tiles or top five tiles and calculating back at the high resolution, okay, these areas, and then training um, a completely new network on these high resolution images. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and Igor was, um, so Igor will tell about his way uh, his solution, but at the end, you can see we had like completely different features, you know, we have a where we trained with the square features uh, with two different losses. Then we had um, trained on the high resolution, extremely high resolution. Um, and then, for example, uh, in my case, we had also, I, I use a lot of, since I had really small network, I could use up to 80 tiles. And also I trained complete with two different losses also. Mm. But in my case, the losses were just different. It was overall, not per data center. and you know, when we combined all our results, we actually performed really good. And again, the reason for choosing these losses and all this stuff, it was, maybe Eagle will explain a little bit later, it was to deal with the noisy labels, you know, because so one data was from Karolinska and other was from Redbound, and one data was labeled by students and other was labeled by the expert, but the private board was like labeled by expert. So we had a lot of noise. So we had to, we found these different ways to deal, you know, to overcome these noise issues. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Igor yeah. would love to know your say. Yeah. So just as Habib said, 
noise was uh, the, the main issue. So it was, it was even stated that uh, the competition metric calculated on uh, uh, for, for train set was only 0 0.85. So mm. that, which means that like significant part of uh, images were labeled incorrectly in, in one way or another. So what I did at is I, I used this, uh, this uh, group normalization layers and I, I trained with batch size one. I intentionally, uh, I, I did a lot of experiments to intentionally bring my network up to a point where it, it uh, has really too much uh, noise on the input. So mm -hmm. I, I applied extensive augmentation both to whole slide and to each individual tile. And I, so I, I, I iteratively, iteratively uh, find out that this this pretty th uh, pretty precise uh, settings, which allowed model to learn uh, and get a high score, but uh, uh, like not 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 uh, not learn any noise uh, as 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 little noise noise as possible. So I applied uh, random crops and and rotates to whole slide, and what I get is slightly different tiles for each epoch. So it, it, I, I use uh, some of my tiles were selected at random and they were selected from slightly different slightly different whole slide each epoch. So basically that, uh, that resulted in slightly different tiles. My, my model hasn't seen any, any uh, like, uh, identical tiles uh, uh, for, for the whole for the whole training like uh, as, as, as a downside it, it's uh, training like took pretty long time because batch size is one and uh, like it, it required uh, like 50 or 60 epochs and uh, like it was maybe 16 hours or so so it's 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 pretty pretty uh, pretty long time, and uh, in addition to what Habib already said about our teammates' approaches, this was like I, I guess it was it was uh, some kind of a eureka moment when we uh, when when our teammate Rugo tried to apply his attention selection to uh, to high resolution and that uh, that that's when we got like a uh, pretty pretty large increase in score at once so it was basically a, a starting starting point of our winning solution of uh, that at that one at that point okay so um, um, was the final solution uh, ensemble of this and how did you decide which two submissions to select for the final uh, leaderboard? Oh yeah, it, it was, it was a, it was pretty interesting story also because we tried to, we tried to build models as robust as possible. We aimed it uh, as little uh, CV LB gap as possible, and we intentionally discarded pretty high, pretty high scoring models, just because uh, uh, their performance was inconsistent. And yeah, our, our basically almost all our models had pretty similar single model score, and uh, they like. Uh, we only got this result uh, thanks to uh, thanks to an ensemble. Okay. Um, yeah, and our ensemble was not the best on LB. You know, interesting. So the, the it it had score like maybe at top to, top twenty, I think. I it was not so, but we selected it because we knew that it's 
you know, the correct thing to do, you know, train differently, different data methods, different tricks. Um, but eventually the two things which we selected, one and super high LB and second super low, L, well, low LB, but good CV, both of them actually got score us, placed us on the second, um, um, on the second place. But we also did, you know, there was a lot of, we had to think a lot actually. And at some point it, it coming down, we were rolling dice, you know, it was, it, it was just, there was a lot of arguments about distribution, like which, you know, because when we calculated metrics, you know, we can calculate for each data center, Karolinska and Redbound. There was a lot of discussion like, you know, should we choose based on Karolinska score or based on Redbound? You know, it, it was like, I think with two, two weeks, we were discussing like nonstop, even like the last day, you know, we, we had this discussion, you know, like, what to choose and yeah it, it it i would say i i think everybody felt that um it's it's extremely challenging the problem was challenging the labels were noisy everybody in the forum was also aware uh you know it can be a lottery so we just did we just trusted uh, our models and uh, and ensembles yeah um, congratulations again on the second position. Um, the solution will be linked in the podcast description for anyone that wants to check it out. Uh, my final question from this category to you would be, I know I've known Habib through the Fast A forums. Uh, I'm not so sort of eager, you're very active on the forums. I know you familiar with the course. So what would be your best advice to someone who's uh, maybe taking Fast A or just starting their Kaggle uh, journey? Uh, okay, so for people who are taking fast AI, basically just do everything what Jeremy says, you know, so just, to, you know, it's, it's very simple. Don't, you don't need to do anything else. Just, I think at some point he mentioned you during the course, you should just look what goes in and what, what goes out, you know, and try to like understand like why this is happening. Yeah. Um, so if you are taking fast AI course, just try to reproduce the notebooks, you know, by yourself, you know, try to do without looking and uh, yeah, just, just try to understand what's actually happening. And second will be that you should try to apply the knowledge which you're learning doing Kegel computations or something, something practical, you know, and don't be afraid to do Kegel computations because yeah, there you gain completely different knowledge and the experience which you will gain actually will, you will better able to understand what is your data and what you can use in order to up to work with this kind of data. So I would say do fast AI and do Kegel challenges. It's like the best of the best. But again, um, you know, after you do fast AI, you don't have to stick to fast AI. You know, you have already so much knowledge that you can actually com work completely independently without the library. So it's not that you become dependent on it. Mm -hmm. You know, you learn and you can just, sometimes I have to like, you know, if you work on the team, sometimes we have to code outside of the fast AI environment, you know, to write something which can everybody use. So, yeah, just follow the fast AI course and do Kato. <laughs> Completely agree with you. Igor, uh, do you have anything to add? Oh, uh, so I have no experience with fast AI, <laughs> but, okay. but yes, uh, I would say that it's extremely important to, to get practice. So, if you, you you shouldn't stick to to some courses like you can one you can watch one course then can, you can watch another course you can uh, you can go some some do some paid courses, but uh, without practice this this uh, this won't help you so you you won't get anywhere anywhere just just uh, just by reading some stuff just by watching some videos. And doing some course assignments. So and Kaggle, I found that Kaggle is is uh, is the best way to to get practice. So it, it's 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 just it, it's competitive environment. It has forums that that share some ideas, mm -hmm. it, and uh, it's uh, as close to some real real world problems as possible. I think so. It's it's extremely extremely important for for beginners to to Kaggle. Absolutely. 
Uh, so I just uh, turned around and looked at your profile. Eager, you just three medals away from becoming a grandmaster, and Habib, you two medals away. What's what's next for you? Are you aiming for that golden uh, profile? Uh, will you keep competing? Ah, uh, well, I guess if we are, I mean, uh, at least I'm halfway, so why not? You know, uh, but getting solo gold, I think it will be challenging. But yeah, I mean, let's say I will try, but. Let's see what will happen. Hopefully, I will get it. But yeah, I think the hardest will be getting solo gold because you know uh, I'm so used to working in the team and like bouncing ideas, like discussing and like experimenting. So I think solo gold will be challenging. But yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Best wishes to you for that. Uh, Igor, what's what's next for you? Uh, do you also plan on continuing on Kaggle? Yeah, sure. I I'm planning on on getting that. Grandmaster tie at some point, but just as Habib said, it's uh, from 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 my current standpoint, it's lo it it looks like it's look like a hard hard challenge. So uh, both both my both both of my two gold medals were in the team, and uh, I knew specifically what 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 got us there. So and. In each of these cases, I wouldn't be able to get gold medal without my team. So, as of today, I have no idea how I how I should how I should uh, approach a, a competition to get a solo gold. But I hope I'll get there one day. Good luck to you as well. Um, so I prepared a special rapid fire round. If you both are up for it, I'd, I'd like to try rapid fire round. Uh, we've been doing this on the comp on the podcast recently sure. um, great so uh, these are a mix of uh, questions from what I've learned about you through Twitter and Kaggle uh, your favorite competition of all time I think uh, Bengali because we got gold medal solution literally like a few hours before the competition ends Igor uh, how about you yeah, the same. It was it was like the single greatest experience with Kaggle so far, because it was just every step of the way was just a, super exciting. I met Habib, I met other guys, and we just we just incremented our way to the top, and we stumbled we stumbled at like in the top twenty like one day before the end, and we almost gave up. We tried all almost everything we could and then one our one of our teammates Jackie he just he just finalized what we was working on for 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 last week and just he came he just came up with this brilliant idea we just assembled it a few hours before the deadline and that's it we, we got ourselves into gold i can only imagine the rush uh, you must have had uh Worst competition experience, if, if you are to pick any. First, what competition experience? Worst, uh, worst oh, competition. Uh, I would say Microsoft competition. Oh, I by agree. the way, <laughs> so I wanna I wanna add something about Jackie. Jackie is a high school student, you know. So I think okay. he was this year. I think he's still giving the exam to graduate. So he's like seventeen year old or sixteen year old. I don't remember. So because of him, we won Bengali competition. It was just crazy. So, Kaggle is a normalizer. Wherever yeah. you are, you can win a competition. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I have to. I, I should have added it before, but. Okay. Uh, so just repeat the question: worst uh, competition experience, if if you are to pick any. Uh, so the worst is probably. Yeah, I guess my my worst experience was with Human Atlas uh, competition because it was my like second competition. It was my first computer vision task, and I also like uh, I wasted so much time and effort to to like to go in my own way, not not looking into the forum, not not using advices that w which I can get from the forum. So I just stump. I I, I just uh, tried tried to try to walk my own path, and that completely didn't work out. And 
it was it was pretty bad but i learned a lot i i i learned that i should read the forum first <laughs> Okay. Um, so this is for just just for her uh, favorite fast A lecture, uh, lecture uh, number or le- uh, year uh, either. So. I I think it was actually last year second part where Jeremy ha- has to code fast A library from scratch. All this lecture series, my favorite. Learned so much. All the Python tricks. <laughs> uh, I I'm still going through them. I haven't been able to digest that <laughs> yet. Um, <laughs> Favorite favorite machine learning framework or a uh, favorite framework in general? PyTorch, PyTorch, obviously. It's just so simple. It's just you know, you can just you can just open notebook and just do it what you want to do without any issues. Everything is clear, easy to debug. And yeah. Eagle, how about you? Yeah, the same PyTorch. And uh, as as one one piece of advice, at least it works for me. Uh, especially for beginners, don't stick to the Jupyter notebooks. I personally, I don't like them, and oh, I so I I don't think it's it's a it's a good idea to to learn to code in the notebooks. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I yeah. Whenever I have to send notebook to Eager, I I always hear complaints <laughs> from him. <about notebook. laughs> I was just going to mention. I saw you smile <laughs> while he was answering. <laughs> <laughs> I learned both of you are interested in machine learning applied to medicine. Uh, your favorite uh, domain or upcoming uh, application that you are very excited about in 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 this area? Um, uh, I would say yeah, medicine is you know like with medicine, yes, certainly. It seems like uh, machine learning and deep learning can really help to analyze a lot of data really fast. Um, so I'm pretty excited about this. Just also just in general, applying machine learning to any scientific problems, like, you know, a uh, uh, problem with astronomy or like, you know, if, you know, problems with big data applied in science. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Reinforcement learning, looking forward to it when, whenever it works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. Uh, any any uh, applications in medicine uh, for machine learning uh, that you've seen uh, that you, you really like? I mean, so I guess analyzing brain data, uh, you know, like um, there is a lot of lab in the work and companies that try to, um, you know, um, analyze how each neuron fires and like combining this data trying to figure out something meaningful. Yeah. So in neuroscience, yeah. Uh, Igor, how about you? Oh, so in general, I'm, I'm very excited in, in, uh, in everything that relates to fighting aging. So I, I'm sure this is one of the, the, the main problems, if, if not the main problem in, in medicine in general. And, and I, I hope that AI should 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 uh, help to make significant progress in this field. So, and I'm pretty excited about it. Totally. Um, PC or console? I I saw I caught Habib uh, retweeting a giveaway with a Nintendo PC or console for you. Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's just easy you travel with it i just put it, it in my fanny pack it has a good charge you <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you a gamer as well do you have a preference uh no i actually don't don't game a lot and uh, the last console i had was in in high school you know, even in middle school so i i i am uh, i'm stuck with pc from that on from that moment on. Interesting. So I, I think this question will just be for Habib then. Favorite uh, game of all time? You have to pick uh, this one. I would say, okay, all time, it's uh, a bit hard. Uh, I would say Counter-Strike 1.6. 1.6? 1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but second favorite is Dead Cell. It's uh, in Nintendo, really fast game. Takes like 30 or 40 minutes to finish around, especially when I'm out of ideas of Kegel. I just pull it and just play it. 
<laughs> that that was the last question. I I actually also also have a favorite game and it uh, it's Fallout or Fallout. Uh, I so I played it when I was a high schooler and uh, it 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 it's now the fourth so four four parts of it. And with I with, with the RTX features game. that that come in handy for your deep learning PC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, before we end the interview, uh, what would be the best platforms to connect with you? Any social media platforms or other ways that you'd like to mention? I uh, just uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I I don't post regularly there, but mostly my stuff is I post only about Kaggle. So it's Doctor Dr underscore hv underscore ai. It's pretty much it. Okay. Now, Igor, would you like to mention any platforms? Ah, uh, not actually. I I don't have Twitter, so it's okay. just just Kaggle. Just follow uh, him on Kaggle. <laughs> <laughs> follow Igor on Kaggle and uh, follow Habib on Kaggle and Twitter as well. Thank you so much to both of you for joining me on the podcast and for uh, sharing your journey and solution. Thank you very much for inviting. Yeah. Th- thanks. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to give it a review or feel free to shoot me a message. You can find all of the social media links in the description. If you like the show, please subscribe and tune in each week to Chai Time Data Science.